Panera now delivers, so you can order good, clean food right to your office or door or porch or backyard or front yard or apartment or dorm or castle or shop or worksite or wherever for lunch, dinner, and everywhere in between. Click the banner to order or visit PaneraBread.com. Participating locations only. Panera. Food as it should be. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit BlackWolfPublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800 553 KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information, or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now, 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures. 
saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Sometimes writers feel lost, unsure why. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing. Black Wolf Editorial Services. We strive offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mental style. We also offer a system file for your blackness. Nurturing your writing. Into- for a full list of services, visit Black Wolf. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network. Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. Hello, America. This is the America Off the Rail Show, or at least it will be officially here in just about a minute or so. We are just about 60 seconds away from showtime. Have a very special guest with us tonight. Of course, you'll be listening to me do a bit of a monologue first, but stay tuned. Buckle up. I'm in a pretty foul mood. Hopefully my guests can cheer me up a little bit. Maybe we'll find some common ground when it comes to this executive order thing. So far, I'm not seeing it. We're going to be talking about that, NFL, and more. So don't go away. Lots, we got lots of shows starting here in just about 60 seconds. Stay tuned. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host. Favorite host. Favorite host. You know this freedom is anything but free. What we have here depends on those who will fight. Hello, America. Welcome to the program. This is Rick Robinson. We are live right now from K- on KLRNRadio.com. We do this thing every Monday through Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern. And we are available also on AMFM247.com, the Talk America Radio Network, the Liberty Channel, and the Lanterns Radio Network. Stay tuned later for details on how to find the programs there and other podcast places you can see the show. Um, want to thank, thank everybody for joining me this evening. And of course, it is Friday Eve. Now, tomorrow is a very special Friday because, first of all, it's payday at the day job. Yay, too bad I only get to keep it for like 20 seconds before the bill collectors come calling. But it's also Friday the 13th. On um, Is it me or is like October one of the like only months where you're guaranteed to get a Friday the 13th? Seems like it always happens in October. I have a feeling it has something to do with the fact that Halloween is also in that month. But who knows? I digress. All right, so we've got lots of stuff to talk about tonight. We've got just about, well, about less than a minute until we get to the first break. When we come back from the first break... I will have my guest with me, who I will introduce here in just a moment. But before we get to the break, I just have to say, um, now, my, my point of view may change. I don't think it will, but it may. I'm really disappointed in all of the, and the, my guest is excluded from this because I know him and I understand where he's coming from. But the people that I have heard screaming the loudest about Barack Obama and his abusive executive orders that are now like, well, this executive order is cool. And I understand because I've done some research on it today. I understand the loophole they think they're getting away with. But I have a pretty stringent 
set of ethics when it comes to executive orders. As far as I'm concerned, they should only be considered proclamations, for one. For two, the only thing they should really be used for, as far as I'm concerned, are the ceremonial things like pardoning the turkeys. Because everything else should go through Congress as far as making and becoming a law, because that's what the Founding Fathers intended. And when we started moving away from that, we started doing away with the checks and balances. But we're going to be talking about that, along with Goodell doing a bit of backpedaling when it comes to whether or not people should be kneeling for the National Anthem what on the National Felons League. Uh, TV, you know, broadcast, things like that. I wonder if they still worry about it on the games that aren't televised or if they're just trying to keep ratings and sponsors. But we have a guest who will be talking with us about that as well. Now, at this point, it is just about time for that very first important break. Unfortunately, this one is a network break, so I really don't have an option. We have to kind of take it or they yell at me. Um, But we will be back here in just about 60 seconds. So stay tuned. Lots more show, just getting things started. So... We'll be right back. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. All right, folks, welcome back. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. And without further ado, we have my very special guest this evening, somebody that I've come to know through social media over the last several months, and you may recognize him as Social Claude. He's actually really cool with memes and actually gets some pretty cool shout-outs on his memes. I'm kind of jealous about that because memes is something I play with him, but I'm not that good with him. All right, Claude, how you doing, man? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great, and, and thanks for the uh, plug on my memes. It's kind of my specialty. I know. I mean, I see all these people, like these big name people, complimenting you on your meme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone, you know, you, not everyone can be great at everything. You know what I mean? I'd just like to be great at some. All right. So anyway, um, we have lots of stuff we were going to talk about tonight. This has actually kind of been an, an, an evolving show concept for us because you were originally going to come on and talk NFL and then all kinds of other things have happened. So you are the guest. So I'm going to let you decide where we go first. Actually, what I'd, what I'd like to start is to kind of give my uh, kind of my history in in this whole political thing because I'm kind of the most reluctant person in, involved in politics that you'll ever meet. I, I really don't like it, but it's I'm sort of I'm just very patriotic, and I you know I I see our country's in trouble, and I just feel compelled to to help if I can. And but I'm going to go back a little bit here. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't recognize me eight years ago. I I grew up in a Democrat very liberal Democrat, New York family, New York City. So that gives you an idea how, how liberal they were. And, you know, I didn't, they, but they did teach me to think for myself. So what happened was as, as uh, I kind of gravitated away and finally the last straw for me, kind of moving towards conservatism was the 2008 election. And at that, at that time I was still backing Democrats and I was backing Hillary Clinton of all people, but you got to remember I was still, you know, Democrat. And, I saw what was happening to her and her supporters from the Obama supporters. Uh, this is like ancient history now. If people may remember the Obama bots, and they were vicious. And and then the race card came up, and it was just and and really the last straw for me was when some of uh, Obama's surrogates started uh, threatening race riots if he wasn't nominated. And I got. I got scared. I mean, that's that's like the last thing you want to hear. And so I ended up um, – I actually ended up voting for uh, – I forget the opponent, McCain. And uh, what happened was I kind of just you know sank into the background. I was very active on the Hill, under the Hillary campaign. And then 
I kind of started looking at the Tea Party movement when it started. It was interesting to me, uh, especially when I saw they were being labeled as racist, homophobes, and everything else that Democrats like to label people as. And it actually, I actually went to a huge rally they had on Boston Common with, with my spouse. I wanted to see who, who all these racists were. So I went there, and I found no racists. All I found were, were patriots. And we even... Uh, we even found a um, a black man dressed in a colonial colonial costume, and he explained to us why he was uh, you know in the Tea Party, and he said he was actually very moderate. So I was very impressed with this event. I think Sarah Palin was there, and so what happened was um, you know, two or three years later, we decided to start the our own Tea Party, which I've since stopped doing. But we went through a few years of doing that, and now I'll fast forward. You know, obviously now I'm, I'm acting, you know. Um, acting more like a conservative, and I, I call myself a, a, a kind of a mainstream conservative. I'm not like because I still carry a lot of the the social um, social liberal kind of stuff, and it's my from my upbringing. So I'm I'm pretty you know I guess I'm more of a moderate conservative, but I'm, I seem to have a, a talent for uh, taking concepts and turning them into memes. So that's what I've been doing lately, and that's kind of where we are here now. So I. You know, your your story was interesting. I actually, I had no idea they started on this journey as as a liberal and then wound up eventually coming around to conservatism. Um, but despite what you may think, you're actually not alone in that. I've actually known quite a few people that kind of came to the same realizations that you did around the same time that you did. So um, it seems in some ways um, the Obama administration and the Obama presidency, even in its infancy stages when it was a campaign, had actually done more good than I think they had intended to. Now, unfortunately, they then went on to basically tear the country apart for eight years, and I'm not sure how we recover from it, and I know a lot of folks have been looking at, you know, this new administration and thinking that it might have been the way. I have to, and I'll be upfront with you just like I am with everybody else, I didn't vote for Trump. Now, I didn't vote for him in the uh, primary. I didn't vote for him in the general either. Now, before anybody starts yelling and screaming... I didn't vote for him in the primary because in, in my state, usually our primaries are done so early that my vote really wouldn't have mattered very much because by then we are there. My, my primary is still late. It's pretty much a foregone conclusion as to who's going to get the nomination. That year, our primary was early enough that I actually felt like I could vote for who I wanted to vote for and possibly make a difference. Unfortunately, it still didn't go the way I wanted because I voted for Cruz in the primary. I did not vote for Trump in the general because by then... The Libertarian Party had gotten uh, pretty big in my state, and I don't know if you're familiar with Oklahoma election laws, but we've, we're fairly draconian. You have to jump through all kinds of hoops to get anything other than the two major parties on a ballot, and they were really close to doing it, so I threw everything I had behind them. Uh, I even had Nicholas Sarwark, the director of the Libertarian, the national director of the Libertarian Party, on my show three times during that cycle. Uh, because I was trying to do everything I could to at least, if nothing else, get them on the ballot here so Oklahomans could start having more choices. The good news is we actually managed to do that. Unfortunately, by the time we had managed to do that, I realized that the Libertarian Party wasn't really anywhere that I wanted to be either. Because the one thing that Nicholas Sarwark had done the three times that he was on my show is point out that, you know, all these conservatives that were looking for a new home, they really didn't want us. So uh, I eventually gravitated back to the Republican Party. I still haven't technically changed my registration again yet, but I, you know, and I reluctantly started pulling for the president because I wasn't going to be the guy that was rooting for the iceberg. And there are days when I like what he does, and there's days when I want somebody to take his phone away. You know, this might surprise you. I don't know if we've talked about this, but I think we have a similar path, at least in recent times. I didn't vote for Trump in the primary. I was originally a uh, Carson supporter, and then when he dropped out, I went with Cruz. Because I realized that we really need some kind of you know strong conservative to turn this ship around. Speaking of icebergs, uh, but what's interesting to me, you made you made a comment about kind of the the um, silver lining to Obama, which was you know resurgence of conservatism. There's a huge silver lining to Trump, even if you don't like him. He has shown a spotlight on the media, and it's about time. I am pickled tink, as I say. That we finally, I <laughs> I, I'm thrilled that uh, you know we are shining this light on the media because they they are I don't know what to call them there I mean I could use some strong words but I'll, I'll just say that they uh, well they're basically a threat to our democracy 
or our republic. And I don't want to get criticized for using democracy because we're not. But they're a threat to our republic. And but not anymore. We have the internet. We have this radio program. And I I see I see hope. I know you 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 express a lot of angst about our future, but I actually see hope because we uh, we still have a voice. We haven't been shut down. Obama tried to do that, didn't happen, uh, and here we are. We're, we're, you know, we're fighting, and the, the Democrats are in a total disarray with all that's going on. You know, with the scandal in Hollywood, it's all tied to them. And and I mean, I can go spiritual here. I I, I have a kind of a spiritual view of what's going on. I also have kind of a humanist view. I I see this malfeasance or evil, if you want to put it in those terms, in Hollywood as really taking the Democrats, it's almost like the last nail in their coffin, but only if Congress can get their act together and get some legislation passed that we need, We need, then the Republicans will remain in control. And I'm not really thrilled about the Republicans being in control, but really they're the only game in town that conservatives have. And let's face this. Yeah, for now, I'm actually working behind the scenes to see if we can change that, but we are up against a break. We will be back here in just about three minutes. We're going to continue the conversation about how the Democratic Party seems like it might be on its last legs, whether we should be dancing in the streets or a little more concerned. And then we're going to probably push topics a little bit because I know you definitely wanted to talk about the uh, shenanigans going on with what I like to call the National Felons League now. We'll be back here in about three minutes. Stay tuned. You're out here acting so tough And now I'm calling you bluff Black hoods in the face My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm. But even then, he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810.
right, folks, welcome back. Sorry for that extended bumper, but my guest and I were having a conversation. We got about 30. All right, so anyway, we are back. We've got a few minutes before we got to take the bottom of the hour break. Um, for those that are following along on the other networks, we're probably going to push that one by a couple minutes, so just pay attention and we'll play it by ear. Uh, now, as far as uh, the conversation goes, we're going to try to give some time to kind of finish up where we, what we were talking about before we change topics after the bottom of the hour. Uh, but you and I were kind of talking about the whole mess that is the Democratic Party. And you actually had something that during the break when we were talking about it, you kind of had a, a bit of an enlightening moment um, about what's going on with pretty much Hollywood and everything else and the Democrats. So I'm going to let you take it away again because you're the guest. Okay. Uh, I actually have a, one of my memes in front of me. And I when I create a meme, a lot of times I'll put I'll put something, I'll preface it in the tweet itself, the text. So I'll read you that part. It's basically... Uh, meme is meant for any paradigm, spiritual or humanist. Bottom line, evil or malfeasance is being cleansed and way overdue. And the meme says, we are now experiencing the 2017 version of Sodom and Gomorrah with Hollywood about to fall into the Pacific Ocean and the demise of the, of the Democrats who embrace their evil. Now, you can take that kind of in a spiritual way or just you can take it in you know, more humanist or however you want to say it, atheist but the bottom line is that, you know, their chickens have come home to roost, to quote the, the great Reverend Wright. Uh, and I think that's what we're witnessing. I, I think that Trump's win, I, I know some people view Trump as evil, but somebody said something about about him that really made me think that that God used Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, when it was, you know, had to do with the Israelites leaving uh Egypt. And so you have this evil man that's used by the God or the creator to, you know, to make a change needed in a positive way, the freedom of these people. So, you know, here we have Trump and the stuff going on in Hollywood and the stuff with the NFL. And Trump has been this catalyst. And even if you don't like him, he's making people confront our dirty laundry. And it's about time. I mean, and you're exactly... I I don't know what is about Trump um, during the election cycle and everything else because it's like he's taken everything that Hillary said during the campaign and like turned it outward for the rest of the country because I remember her making this big deal about, well, if Donald Trump doesn't decide to abide by the, the, the election results, then he's not an American and then that's un-American. And then it was her folks that took to the streets. It was her folks that lock themselves up in their college classrooms in their pajamas with their safe spaces and their coloring books and their participation trophies. And then they started taking to the streets and tearing things up. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm watching all this. And again, you know, remember I'm the reluctant Trump guy. I fought him all the way through. I actually, we did two hours of campaign coverage the night that he won. I, because I promised I would, I literally tried to sit here and eat a MAGA hat because I told somebody if he won, I would eat a hat. <laughs> I couldn't do it, of course, because, you know, I'm old and being even if they were a hat. But I did actually try because, you know, I, I gave them. But at the same time, you know, I saw them start melting and freaking out and flipping out. And it got worse and worse and worse. And every time – that's the thing. Every time Trump says or does something that makes me not want to support him, the liberals do something or say something a million times worse. And I'm right back going, okay, well, he's still better than these morons. Now, you know, uh, for the last part of the show, you and I probably will talk about the EO, but uh, we need to take another break here in about another 60 seconds. So I just want to kind of wrap this particular topic up before we change over to the NFL. The one thing that I will say about what I've seen happen with the Democrats is I'm glad it's happening because these are things that I've known for a long time in some ways about how devious this party was and how deeply unstable a lot of the people that are inside that party were. And we've known it for a long time. We've seen it with the Kennedys. We've seen it with the Clintons. We knew about it with the Obamas, but nobody was talking about it. And now the the liberal mecca of Hollywood is basically cannibalizing itself, while at the same time they were vilifying the vice presidential candidate of the United States on the Republican side because he said, I don't want to have a late night dinner with anybody other than my wife. And if you don't like it, I don't care. And yeah. That you know, Rick, you know what the bottom line here is that the the Democrats have nothing nothing to offer the marketplace of ideas. So all they can do is promote riots and violence and cop assassinations. I mean, this is real sick, perverted, evil crap. I mean, let's be honest here. And I, I try not to get worked up about stuff, but even th thinking about this, the, 
you know, assassinated police officers that, that are just doing their job. And it's just, I don't know what to do with that emotion other than fight back. No, and I don't either. And part of what, you know, made me start really thinking about it was, you know, towards the end of the year when the, the Black Lives Matter movement really started moving more to the forefront and they were doing the whole chance like pigs in a blanket, fram like bacon. And then there's the audio of, you know, when they were prepping the Black Lives Matter marches, they were like, all people of Africa, African-American descent, move to the front. White people, even if you're here to support us, get your asses back. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You guys are se- segregating the people that are there to support you and your supposed crazy movement. And that's when imagine I re- that. That's when I realized just how crazy all of this has really gotten. And that nation has managed to do it. You know, because the one thing that I was upset about Trump with at first is every other conservative presidential candidate at some point, when they realize that they're bringing out the crazies like the all right folks, they usually put them back in their place. I was upset at first that he didn't do that, except now they're actually coming back out of the woodwork again. And we know where they are and we know what we and, and we know how to get to them because we don't want them any more than we want the crazy other radical folks. But anyway, we really do have to take a break because I'm running long and some folks are going to get cranky with me here in a minute. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. We'll be back in about four minutes. When we come back, we're going to change topics and start talking about the National Felons League and uh, the uh, one of the directors uh, sudden backpedal about people standing for the pledge after everybody stopped watching. Is it too little too late? We'll talk about that. You're out here acting so tough and now I'm calling. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 
Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Right, folks welcome back i can't believe we're already over halfway through the show and thanks to taking a long break there we're actually further through than we usually are by now but anyway we still have lots of time to talk with my guest and we're actually going to change to the main topic this was the original thing that he wanted to come on about because he actually has an idea about how not to only fix the national felons league possibly but how to fix a lot of things because as, as he's about to tell you he thinks that we were once a nation of problem solvers and he thinks we need to get back to that again so without further ado sir take it take it away thank you rick and if, if you don't mind can i plug my twitter account because you didn't because that's how people can find me sure okay you can find me on twitter at social claude that's that's it social claude on twitter but anyway getting to the problem solving um i think that people have lost the will and ability to solve problems uh, we see things come up and they 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 fester and then no solutions and uh, so I decided to uh, I had a moment of inspiration. I came up with a way to solve the uh, problem we're having with the NFL. And so I'll just read you this, uh, this and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, so solution to NFL players versus fans conundrum. President Trump invites NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell to the White House for a private meeting to resolve the conflict between NFL players and fans. If private meeting is successful, they can stipulate a future larger meeting adding owners and National Football League Players Association representatives to work on a solution. Uh, And here's an example of a solution. Players agree to stop the protest on the field and take it to social media and off-field activism. Trump agrees to set up a commission on player grievances. It is important to also include black-on-black violence. Can't sweep this under the rug any longer. NFL owners and players agree to help fund improving black community police relations and curtailing black on black violence. Presidential commission will offer realistic solutions to aid the ongoing process. Now, the reason I added the black on black violence is that uh, I see an opportunity to get to have something good come out of what's bad. And, you know, when we solve problems, we should also, you know, try to make, you know, other changes, you know, related changes. I see this as uh, I see this as something that the players should have an interest in. If they're concerned about police brutality, they should also be concerned about the, their communities that they come from. And so anyway, I kind of wrapped that in there. And I, I thought that um, uh, it's one of those issues that, you know, conservatives always bring up when when we talk about, you know, race issues in this country. How come you guys are sweeping this under the rug? And and then they get criticized for bringing it up, but they shouldn't be getting criticized. This is a this is a big problem. Lives are at stake. So so anyway, that's. That's kind of the idea. Well, I mean, I, th- I think it's a really good idea, and it's one of the things that I've talked about for quite You know, you have these guys that make millions of dollars a year. A good portion of them have criminal records of one form or another, which would exclude them from most jobs out here, especially the ones – there's there, there's a handful that have been convicted of felons or felonies, which is why I call it the National Felons League, because there are some of these folks that without football, they would be asking if you want fries with this. Um, so the fact that they're basically – trying to to turn the football field into a political statement annoys me because these are the type of people that have the ability through their money, their talents, their influence to be doing things away from the field that could make these things actually better instead of 
just I mean to me and again I'm an I'm an old fat white guy so think whatever you want to think but I'm going to tell you that if I was in that situation and I had I would like to think that if I was in that situation and I had that type of exposure available and I had that type of money available the first thing that I would do is go pick out a school and be like how can I help what do you guys need from me how much money can I give you before you guys get in trouble what can I do to make sure that these kids have an easier time than I did when I went to this school? I mean, because that's, that's what they should be doing. These people have been blessed with millions of dollars. And they're, well, every, the, I'm doing this because people are being oppressed. That's great. That's all well and good. But what are you doing to fix the oppression on the front end, not the back end? What, what, are, what are you doing with your time, your talent, and your money other than throwing a pigskin around? That's one of the reasons why I've never been a huge... Um, professional football fan. I've always been a college football, but I'm not, I've never really been a huge professional football fan because it's always made me really angry that people have made millions of dollars for playing, playing a game that all of us at one point or another have played in our backyard. And they're making millions of dollars only because they were much better at that game than I was. And then there's just the ungratitude of it all. You, you have probably one of the best jobs on the planet making crazy amounts of money and you're telling me how much this country sucks? Screw you. Why don't you do something to fix it then instead of taking a knee? Sorry. Well, exactly. I, I think that uh, one thing that I, I've been wondering is do these players that are kneeling, do they actually know what they're kneeling about and, wh- and how this whole thing came about? I don't think so. I think it's just become like a fad. And I think that, uh, you know, I'm actually, here we go again, kind of thinking big picture. I'm actually glad they're doing this now because now we're talking about this and and these other issues that are, you know, related. And, you know, America, to me, has, has a huge heart and we could solve or help the black community solve its problems, not, not, with, not with money, but with, with our energy and support in terms of, uh, you know, getting people to be innovative. Uh, I, I think that... There are communities where people have have turned this around and, you know, taking those examples and bringing them elsewhere. And uh, but here's a big problem I see. I see that the Democratic Party stays in power as long as, you know, people are are fighting and and and, you know, and yelling at each other. And, And they don't I hate to say this, but I don't think they want to solve any of these problems. Well, I'll be the first one to tell you that I don't really think anybody in government wants to solve because government was never intended to be the profession that it is today. And if they actually fixed the things that needed to be fixed, we wouldn't need them anymore. So that's not necessarily just the Democratic problem, which I think, right. which I think is another reason why Donald Trump is catching so much flack from all sides, because there are people that are deeply embedded and entrenched in this government that when he started talking about actually wanting to come in and fix things, that's the last thing that they want. Because if things actually got fixed, we wouldn't need them anymore, and they wouldn't need gold ticket, gold ticket health care and lifetime retirements. I mean, I mean, yeah. here's to, and, and give me just a sec. Um, but here's the one thing about Congress and the Senate and everybody: these guys were millionaires before they ever got here. We don't need to give them retirement. If you want to fix the medical care system, make them get on the medical care system. I guarantee you it'll be fixed in five minutes. Not only that, but it'll be fixed and it will actually work and we'll save money. You know, just like Donald Trump said that we would. But if we can get rid of the gold ticket health care and the lifetime retirement plans for people that don't need lifetime retirement, we've already fixed a lot of our economic issues. Because how much money could that put towards other things if we weren't paying people retirement for the rest of their lives who don't need it in the first place? I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I think that I'm I'm kind of in the mindset of the uh, – I'm kind of a light Trump advocate. I'm not real heavy duty. You, you, you know that from seeing what I've said. And I try to support him, and I think I probably support him you know, more than you do. But I agree with you. I think that the, the problem of – the issue of both parties not wanting to solve problems is true. But I think we actually have somebody who wants to solve problems, and he's uh, – because I don't think he knows – any better. He's not a politician. I don't think he ever will be. Yeah, um, well, I, I mean, I, I don't think I, I really hope you're right. It's just, honestly, unfortunately, a lot of the things that I've kind of been warning people about all along, which were the reasons why I was opposed to him in the first place, seem like they're starting to come to fruition. Um, but, you know, I could be wrong. You know, I was wrong about who was going to win. You know, I was actually talking about that with 
one of my cohorts over on KOKC today on Twitter um, because he was one of the guys calling it all along, and it was before I even started working there on a fill-in basis. And I'm like, dude, back when I used to li- just listen to you on the radio, you had me yelling at my radio because you were like way back before anybody else even said anything. Trump's got this thing in the bag, and I'm like, you're crazy. He's like, yeah, am I crazy now? I'm like, shut up. But yeah, I mean, so, you know, I, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. It's just, you know, I, I just have a bad feeling about some of this. And part of it for me um, was the executive order that uh, was done today. And I've done some research. I understand how they're going to get away with it. I still don't necessarily agree with the fact that they've done it. But we'll talk about that when we get back. We've got one last break to get out of the way, and then we'll close out the show talking about the EO because I promised we'd talk about that too. So we'll be back here in about two minutes. Stay tuned. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y. For more information, or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit BlackWolfPublications.com for more details. All right, folks, welcome back. Well, believe it or not, we're almost done with the show. I don't know where the last hour went because it sure seems like it went by in a hurry. Uh, We've got just about enough time to touch on the last segment and section, which will be good because this is something that uh, Claude and I have talked about off air today. And... We seem to disagree a bit, Um, and I get it, and again, you know, I really, because I was at work, I didn't really have time to research it today, I just had time to watch the, you know, the bit from Rand Paul, and then study his facial expression, and everything else that everybody was pointing out, and I understand what they're doing at this point, because I'm part of a group that kind of likes to take these things apart and put them back together, called the Federalist Coalition, and they've pointed out the law that they're using to get through this, and how it will probably stand up to constitutional scrutiny, and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. I am sorry, I am of the mindset that executive orders are bad. They were bad under Obama, they're just as bad under Trump. I'm sorry, but in my book, Schoolhouse Rock told us how laws are supposed to be done, and this ain't it. And I get it, it's probably legal, it's probably constitutional, I still think it's probably unethical because it circumvents the checks and balances of the Constitution, But I do understand how they did it and how they're probably going to get away with it. What upsets me is all of the people that were, oh my God, Obama's the devil because he's using executive order to do everything. Oh, look, Trump's using executive orders. They're cool now. Sorry, that's just me. I'm not I'm not going to come away on that. I'm either you're you're for the Constitution. You want a government that's going to support, defend and uphold the Constitution or you don't. And if you can find wiggle room there and you can look yourself in the mirror, that's great. I'm not telling you you can't have a different opinion than me. I'm just telling you that from a constitutional perspective, 
executive orders should be used for pardoning turkeys. That's about the only thing that are legitimate. That's just me. You know, it's it's interesting that uh, I'm glad that you and I had our little uh, disagreement. It was a friendly disagreement. I'm glad we had it because, you know, you're having me think uh, – because your position to me is more philosophical. And, uh, you know, I, I think I said to you, um, your position, I kind of sum- summarize it in the way I understood it is that any executive order beyond ceremonial uh, is not in the spirit of the Constitution. And that's an, an interesting point of view. What, what, what I will say about uh, the people that were screaming at Obama that are now cheering Trump, uh, I actually have a meme about this that I created a while ago. It's politics is selective moral outrage. So that's what that is. It's just politics. Yeah, I mean, here's somebody else in another group with put it much better. There's there's no longer any form of hypocrisy in politics. There's only precedence. Because what everybody's doing now that is okay with it is like, well, you know, Barack Obama set the precedent. These people are always going to do things this way. So we either do things this way to undo the things that they've done and they're trying to make things better, or we keep trying to work in the framework of the Constitution and we don't ever manage to get anything done. And I'm sorry, to me, I am a strict constitutionalist. I am probably more of what I would consider a constitutionalist than I would consider myself a conservative. Because there's plenty of things that I don't necessarily have an issue with that a lot of people that call themselves a strict conservative would. To my wife's chagrin, I am not opposed to gay marriage. I do not think that that, that is big of, that, that big of a deal. Now, if they start trying to make a staunch Baptist perform a gay marriage, I'm going to have a problem with that. If they for, try to force a, a baker to bake a cake, I had a problem with that. Just like I really don't understand the perspective of these folks that, you know, we're all screaming about the bake me a cake, but then we had a gay coffee shop owner kick a bunch of Christians out, and apparently that's acceptable. Makes absolutely no sense to me. It would have been acceptable if not for the precedent that was already set. But then, see, there we go back to that, because as far as I'm concerned, each business owner should have the ability to refuse service to anyone they choose and let the market decide. But since a precedent had been set for the cake bakers, here I am thinking in my heart, I really hope these guys hire an attorney and sue that a-hole out of, out of business. But that's that, again, is because of precedent. So th- this is not an uncommon thing to stop. You know, this isn't really about common sense or hypocrisy anymore. It's about precedent. And that's how a lot of people are looking at this. And that's that's how they're justifying it. But for me, the one is much different than the other because it's we're either going to support, defend and uphold the Constitution or we're not. And I understand not everybody's as strict about that as I am. That's like I understand that not everybody's as strict about abortion as I am. And I'm not one of these guys that think we need to go back to the dark ages where women are hanging out in back alleys using coat hangers. But I do think we shouldn't have a Planned Parenthood on every corner pretty much like we do a 7-Eleven at this point. Because we're never going to put the genie back in the bottle. But just because I don't necessarily think that there shouldn't at least be something available in case there's an emergency or whatever the case may be, that there doesn't need to be anything available. But because for me, there are gray areas in many, many things. The Constitution is not one of them. And that's why I have the same position now that I had with Barack Obama. If if you're using your pen and your phone to make law as a president, as far as I'm concerned, you are violating the Constitution. And I understand that I'm kind of alone out on a limb in this viewpoint because everybody that I know that I used to respect, like folks like Rand Paul, who basically called Obama the devil because he was we're not a monarch, monarchy and he shouldn't be ruling by executive order. He today called Trump's executive order visionary. I really, for just a moment, was trying to see if I could see Rod Serling out of the corner of my eye today. I'm just saying. Well, that's that's because you have the view that that the executive order, even if in constitutional violates the spirit of the Constitution, and Rand Paul is obviously doesn't agree with that, and he, in his mind, he sees what he said about Obama and what he's saying about Trump now is, is different. But you brought, you brought up as interesting about Obama. He kind of personifies the slippery slope because we're dealing with the, you know, you know, we're sliding down now, and, and you know, you're feeling – what I'm hearing from you is that we're sliding further down. Well, I mean, in a way, in a way, we are because Obama set the precedents. Now Trump is using. At some point, the pendulum is going to swing the other way, and there's going to be another Democrat in office, whether we like it or not. It'll either be a Democrat or a socialist. You know, the Democrats may completely implode, and Bernie Sanders may rise up like the cockroach he is, and suddenly form the Socialist Party of America, and it may take hold. I don't know, but what I do know is somebody that has that sort of ideology will again come into power in one form or another, and then they're going to have the chance to do exactly and what concerns me is because every is every time the, the republican party is the 
the the minority party, it's my constitution. The constitution is everything. The constitution is the letter of the law. The constitution this, the constitution that. And then they're no longer the minority party, and it's constitution. What's that? It's no different than the Democrats. For eight years, they treated like the Constitution like it was toilet paper. Now they're the first ones to scream anytime the Republicans do anything that they feel violates the Constitution. It, to me, it's just it, it's hypocrisy. And I understand in politics, there really can be no such thing as hypocrisy. But I'm not a politician. So to me, it smacks of hypocrisy when somebody who was just yelling about executive orders is fine about this executive order because it's it's legal even if it is, as far as I'm concerned, unethical. And I'm not the only one that views it as unethical. We're just able to look at it and be like, well, they found a loophole. Probably not what we would do, but it is a loophole, and they're probably going to get away with it, and it sucks, and now they're going to make it easier for the next guy to find another loophole. But it, it is what it is. But I'm never going to be happy about Donald Trump breaking out and dusting off Obama's pen because I'm, I don't want to hear another president talk about how he has a pen and he has a phone. And when Donald Trump started talking about, well, Congress won't do it, so I'm going to do it with my pen. I'm like, oh, my God, it's Obama all over again. And that's the same thing he said about the the immigration reform. He couldn't get Congress to do it, so he's going to do it. And the same people that were yelling about that are using the same argument that Barack Obama used about immigration reform. Well, what excuse, what choice does he have, Rick? Congress won't do anything. Gee, that sounds like the same thing that President Momjean said. And we weren't okay with that then. So why is it okay now? Well, I'm, I'm glad you're bringing this up, okay? I think that what you're saying makes a lot of sense, and it's got me thinking. And I think that all people should be willing to consider, you know, different points of view and change. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and you're right. And, and as far as I'm concerned, that is exactly, we should either get to the point where whatever executive orders a president passes expire at the end of their final term and everything resets back to the way it was before. And then the next president gets to do whatever executive orders they want to do, or we need to do away with executive orders all the way around. And as far as I'm concerned, we should do away with them other than for presidential proclamations. Like, oh, look, we're going to save this turkey today. Because it, it, I'm sorry, that is not how law should be created according to our Constitution. I'm never going to change my opinion on that, and I understand I'm not the only one here, which is probably why there will be many presidents after me still using executive orders. But I don't like them, and I don't like signing statements either, because that's another way that a president sneaks a lot of things through that somebody doesn't even really know about. Ronald Reagan was crazy about signing statements. And I didn't even realize that until I got some that I got old enough that I actually was able to start going back and looking at it. There were all kinds of things that were done because the president has the ability to use what's called a signing statement when they sign something to change the entire intent of something, and it still basically is legally binding. And I just that, that, that I don't care which side it is. To me, that is wrong. I mean, if we're going to do that, we might as well give the president the same power that most governors have and give them line item veto. Because at least then they can go in and legitimately take things out of the bill that they don't like. Which is great, because right now Congress, just anytime there's anything that needs to be passed and it's, well, the president's going to have to pass this, so let's cram all this crap in it. Because then if he doesn't pass it, we can yell about how he's not taking care of the people, and then we'll be able to get all these things that our constituents want, even though we're broke. I mean, th we have to be able to do something to combat the craziness, because Washington just doesn't seem to care anymore. And to me, executive order is just wrong. But anyway, we are officially long, and I don't really want to really keep you any longer. Um, so why don't you remind folks again where they can find you when you are not uh, hanging out with me or uh, doing your mean thing? Where can they find you on Twitter? Oh, well, they can find me on Twitter uh, at Social Claude, and uh, you know, follow me, and I follow back 99.99%, .99%, so you'll get a follower. That was if I hit the right button. All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for this particular episode of America Off the Rails. I want to thank my very special guest, uh, as Social Claude, or at Social Claude is how you can find him on Twitter. And I know he's like, well, you didn't give up my Twitter. I didn't really think about it because I actually put it in the title. So anybody that was looking was going to be able to find out who you were. But um, at this point, hopefully uh, you'll have some folks that will follow along. Um, now, this show, if you've missed it, hang, hang tight. It's going to reset in a minute. There'll be a podcast version coming up in just a bit. Also, it'll be available tomorrow on amfm 24 Tom, Lanterns Radio Network, and the Talk America Radio Network, and available uh, Saturday night on crndigitaltalk.com out of California. So if you missed it, there's plenty more opportunities. And if nothing else, you can just go hang out and listen to it on iHeartRadio. 
We'll see you guys when we see you. I'll be back live again tomorrow night for the Robinson and Wright Show. That's right. We didn't do it last week because Friday Night Lights got in the way. But Friday Night Lights was on Thursday this week. So the wife and the kid have already been at that while I've been working. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Take care. Panera now delivers. So you can order good, clean food right to your office or door or porch or backyard or front yard or apartment or dorm or castle or shop or work site or wherever for lunch, dinner and everywhere in between. Click the banner to order or visit PaneraBread.com. Participating locations only. Panera. Food as it should be.